Specifically trying to resurrect the law of Moses is called Judaizing, and it is a type of legalism. But more generally, legalism just means trying to create rights and wrongs on neutral issues like the Pharisees did with the oral law. In that sense, legalism is far more wide-ranging than Judaizing. The law of Moses has 613 rules, but the amount of legalistic man-made rules people can come up with are endless. Don't drink that. Don't eat that. Don't wear that. It's to the legalists that Jesus said their worship is a farce and they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. As I mentioned at the beginning of section 2, there is unfortunately still a lot of legalism in churches today and I want to highlight a few key examples. First let's deal with our suits versus jeans dilemma. Which is the right thing to wear to church? I've alluded to the answer already. Because of our freedom under the law of Christ, we are free to do both. Clothes are neutral. Use them in whichever way will most authentically express your love for Christ and others. Your way may look different from someone else's way, but that's fine. God is only concerned with your motivation. He's looking at the heart. Musical instruments are also neutral items. Through tradition more than anything, some people have decided that pipe organs or pianos are somehow more holy and acceptable to God than guitars and drums. Nonsense! Use any of them and all of them to worship God. Psalm 150 tells people to praise him with the horn, the lyre, the harp, the tambourine, with dancing, with strings and flutes, and with the clash of loud clanging cymbals. In other words, whatever you can lay your hands on. We all have musical preferences, but it's idolatrous legalism to insist that what you prefer is what God would prefer too. Don't create God in your own image. It's okay if you prefer the sound of piano to a guitar, but it's equally okay if someone likes the reverse. Often this is a generational thing, so young people don't look down on older people for their preferences. Old people don't look down on younger people for theirs. Let each person worship God in a way that is meaningful. What about emotion in worship? I've heard people talk disapprovingly of those who are showing too much excitement or emotion in church because they feel that people should be reverent and sombre just like they are. There is room for everything and there is a time for everything. If you are happy in God, then express it with joy. If you are weak and wounded, then cry on his shoulder. If you are suddenly aware of his holiness, then stand in reverence and awe. Just be authentic. Remember when King David felt so blessed by God that he felt the urge to dance? So that's exactly what he did. He was dancing so hard that the garment he was wearing failed to preserve his modesty and he exposed himself to onlookers. When his wife saw him, she was angry and said, How distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. David replied with no shame at all, saying, I was dancing before the Lord. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord. So I celebrated before the Lord. Yes, and I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. David isn't thinking of how he looks at all. He's thinking of God first and himself last, fulfilling the law of Christ. That is the freedom that we have too. Forget tradition, the way it's always been done. Forget who is around you. Forget how foolish you might look and just be authentic with God. Love him. Church is a place for dancing and celebration as well as reverence and fear. No authentic expression of worship should ever be discouraged. Now some people think you shouldn't lift a finger on a Sunday, that it's a sin to play sport or even go for a walk. I remember my grandparents thought that washing the dishes on a Sunday was a sin. Sunday is a neutral day. Enjoy your freedom with it. Enjoy his creation and his goodness on that day. After church, go for a walk, relax, play sport. The principle of taking a day off a week to recharge is still a good one, as many of the Old Testament principles are. In the movie Chariots of Fire, the true story of Eric Liddell is told. He wouldn't run on a Sunday because his conscience told him not to and he was blessed for obeying that conscience. He was putting God first. But if his conscience hadn't bothered him, then he could just as easily have run on Sunday and God would have blessed that too. That's the freedom of Christ's law. Simply react to your conscience and the leading of the Holy Spirit.